Several names dropped off the final Masters leaderboard Sunday, but the one constant since the beginning remains. Hi, and welcome to the Daily Sports Update presented to you by Toyota. I'm Amber Wilson for CBSSports.com. Ever since Trevor Emmerman's back-to-back -back rounds of 68 to open the Masters, the South African was the golfer everyone else in the field was looking up the leaderboard to find. His final round playing partner, Brant Schnedeker, fell apart on the back nine, but Schnedeker had plenty of company with Tiger Woods struggling to make birdie putts and seemingly everyone else succumbing to bogeys, Immelman pushed his lead to as much as six strokes heading down the stretch. Despite a minor slip up at 16, Immelman was able to shrug it off and finish out the final two holes for his first green jacket just four months after having a benign tumor removed from his diaphragm. You know, just to be a major champion and be a champion here at the Masters is, uh, you know, that's what I've dreamt about since I was a very young man. and. Uh, you know, at times you doubt whether you're good enough to get it done, and at times when things are going wrong, you wonder if it'll ever happen. But, uh, you know, I'm living proof that if you work hard and, and believe in yourself, it can happen. Well, Trevor, as we all know, is, is extremely talented. I mean, uh, he's had some hard luck the last you know, few years and uh, with some illnesses, and he's battled through it. And um, it's just a matter of time before he was going to break through. I mean, he's got all the talent in the world. The Los Angeles Lakers took a big step towards securing the top spot in the Western Conference, with a 106-85 route of the defending world champion San Antonio Spurs, Kobe Bryant netted 20 points before sitting out the fourth quarter. The Lakers own the tiebreaker against the only team within striking distance, the New Orleans Hornets, meaning a victory in their season finale Tuesday night against visiting Sacramento will ensure home court advantage in the first three rounds of the postseason. On the diamond, the Red Sox took the rubber game of their three-game set with the rival Yankees in a sloppy 8-5 win. The teams combined for 14 walks in a game that lasted nearly four hours. Daisuke Matsuzaka improved to 3-0 on the young season despite a subpar outing, while New York starter Phil Hughes was shelled for seven runs in just two innings of work. Elsewhere in the American League, the White Sox were all over the Tigers behind grand slams from both Joe Creedy and Paul Canerco. It was the first pair of slams in one game for Chicago since Darren Lewis and Robert Ventura accomplished the feat in 1996. Javier Vasquez stuck out nine and seven shutout innings to hand Detroit its major league worst tenth defeat. Some overtime thrillers in the Stanley Cup playoffs Sunday night. First at the Garden, the Devils climbed back into their series with the Rangers after John Madden's centering pass deflected off defensive man Mark Stahl's skate and into the net six minutes into the extra frame to give New Jersey a 4-3 win. And Mark Savard netted the game winner for the Bruins on a delayed penalty midway through the first overtime to get Boston back into its opening round series with Montreal, which now has a two games to one lead. In other action, the Flames took a 2-1 series lead over the Sharks behind Owen Nolan's decisive tally late in regulation. And the Flyers evened up their matchup with the Capitals at one game apiece, thanks to Martin Baron's 24 saves and a 2-0 shutout in D.C. And that'll do it for the Daily Sports update presented to you by Toyota Kumau right here at CBSSports.com for everything you need to know in the world of sports. And if you missed anything here today, stop, refresh, and rewatch. I'm Amber Wilson. Have a fantastic Monday.